Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Weaver. So Weaver is a carry one position hero, has been played in some other positions relatively recently because of the Agnum Scepter build, but we're not going to focus on that. We're just going to focus on the traditional Weaver, which is a carry one position hero. And so how to think about this hero is, first and foremost, this is a lane dominating carry. This hero is really hard to kill, is kind of squishy, but because of the unlocked move speed and damage of Sakuchi and the range of this hero, not huge range, but it is a ranged hero, you can kind of get in and out, position yourself in a really good way, you're kind of immune to slows in some ways uh, in the lane, so it's really hard to kill you, and you can get very, very aggressive once you get a few levels in your abilities, you know, once you get to like level 4 or something, and you have... Uh, one point in all of your abilities, probably two points in Sakuchi. You just kind of are a threat in the lane. It's very hard for almost any hero to walk up to you because you can just do so much damage to them. And then, you know, you're just going to dominate the lane from there, get your last hits, get your farm, and those kinds of things. Hopefully, pressure the enemy, kill the four position, kill the three position a bunch, maybe take the offlane tower if you can, those kinds of things. And then... What you're going to do is you're probably going to buy, you know, some kind of farming item or mana regen item because this hero doesn't really farm very well. So, transitioning into the mid game, you want to put yourself at a very aggressive place on the map. Split push pretty aggressively because this hero can survive in places where most other heroes would die, or would get caught out, would, you know, be picked off because this hero is a very fast, has a lot of, you know, um, survivability, those kinds of things. So you just want to be playing as aggressive as possible, and that's how you need to learn, you know, where can you go, where do you have to back off, all of those kinds of things on the map in the mid-game. And then the same thing applies for later in the game or in team fights. And you should be generally joining team fights kind of early on because you do a decent amount of damage and you have high mobility, so you can get around the map pretty quickly. But in a team fight, it's all about, you know, where to position yourself, when to use your Sakuchi to get the most damage onto enemy heroes, and what hero to actually target. Because Weaver isn't a carry like a Sven or something like that that just mans up. He also doesn't have like a Chronosphere-like ability or some kind of obvious ability where you just pop it and then you fight them or something like that. He is like a poke and prod, go on the right target, position yourself perfectly in the fight so that you can get the maximum amount of damage, but also not put yourself in a position where you can get chain stunned and other things like that. So it's a very kind of complicated hero in team fights to play. But if you get good with this hero, it'll really, really teach you good positioning overall, and you can apply that to many other heroes and many other even positions. And just, it really helps you maximize your positioning and damage. So if you're not getting a lot of damage in games, you know you need to position, uh, change your positioning and those kinds of things. And that's how you need to think about this hero. So a lane dominating hero, a kind of split pushing aggressive hero in the mid game, and then in team fights, kind of dipping in and out, putting yourself in the right position to go on the right target, like supports and those kinds of things, and doing a lot of damage with your right cl right click, but not really, you know, manning up on people and uh, being slippery and those kinds of things. So that's Weaver. That's how you can think about the hero in general. And now let's take a look at the abilities. Now that we know how to think about Weaver in general, we can take a look at his abilities and see how he's able to be that lane-dominating, slippery, you know, high survivability, high mobility hero, uh, like I talked about. So, first we're actually going to take a look at Sakuchi, because this is kind of his main spell. And it's pretty simple. You just click it, you go invisible, and then you are kind of maxed out with move speed, 550 here, and you go around and anything you touch yes. takes damage. So, we can see here, I go... To all of these creeps and they all take damage they only are allowed to take damage once so if you you know go under a creep or touch a creep and then go back or a hero or something like that it doesn't do damage twice so it only does damage the one time but it's not a lot of damage later but it's a decent amount and it's pretty good in the lane it's honestly mostly for securing cs or doing damage in the lane those kinds of things but it's really really a good ability to get in and out of fights to position yourself correctly and all of those kinds of things it's the main spell on this hero. It's the main thing that makes Weaver unique. And so, it's pretty simple, what I showed you right there, and it has a low cooldown. This is your main spell that you're going to be using a lot to get around the map, to farm a little bit, to, you know, be slippery and all of those kinds of things. Pretty simple. Next, we're going to look at the Swarm. This is his Q ability, and basically what this does is it shoots out a bunch of bugs in a direction, so I can click it, and then I just choose what direction, and it shoots out a bunch in a direction there, and they all fly, like, for a little while. It's a pretty long range, and then they attach to any enemy that they hit, creep or hero, and then over time, they, like, do a little bit of damage, so they cancel blinks and all that kind of stuff. As you can see, this axe is taking damage, but the other thing that happens 
I'll refresh here and we'll, we'll cast it again, is it actually reduces armor. So you see, every tick of damage that Axe is taking, he's actually losing more armor. So this is one of the big, big ways that this hero does a lot of damage, is you kind of shoot out the bugs here. So you put yourself, you know, you Sakuchi into a position, you shoot out your bugs or whatever, and then the hero that you shot out those bugs onto, or the multiple heroes, usually you hope to get multiple heroes, they have a choice of either running away, facing you, or clicking the bug, because the bug can be attacked. So you see here, the bug will take damage, and then if they uh, do enough damage or it runs out, then the, the bug will disappear and the armor will go back to normal. But like, the hero that has the bug on them has, has to make this decision of, what are they going to do? Man up? Are they going to run away? Are they going to click the bug? And meanwhile, you can just like, click them. And... They really don't want to man up on you. They don't want to turn and try to fight you. They want to get rid of the bug because the more armor that they lose, the more damage you're going to be doing. And as a carry, obviously doing damage is very important. And that bug does so much armor reduction that you can do a ton of damage, especially to supports. And supports usually have low attack speed. So, you know, you go on a lion or something in the back line, you maybe have a BKB. You pop a BKB, you put the bugs on the lion, and, you know... Well, what's he supposed to do? He, he's going to take him a long time to kill the swarm, but he's going to be losing so much, uh, so much armor that you're just going to kind of kill him very, very quickly. So that's the swarm. I will briefly mention one of the reasons that Weaver is good now is because this Agnum Shard allows the swarm to attach and reveal invisible heroes. So in the past, if you know you did go in a line or you did something like that. Um, you would just buy a Glimmer Cape as a support, and then you would go invis, and then the bug would detach, but not anymore with this shard. So it really makes this hero a lot more powerful, because invis isn't like a simple counter to him. So, that's the swarm. It's a pretty big late-game ability. I mean, it's good in the lane, it's good for farming and stuff like that, because the creeps will aggro this ability, like jungle creeps and stuff like that. But honestly, later in the game, it's kind of one of your keys to fighting correctly and doing a lot of damage. Next, we'll see Geminate Attack. It's a passive ability, but you can activate it. Um, you can choose when to use it or when not to use it. That's kind of a new thing, but basically all it does is we see I'm attacking here with Weaver. I have a decent range, not the best, but then I can use it by clicking the ability, and it'll just shoot out a second attack. Now, if I right-click it, it'll automatically, like if I turn it on, it'll just automatically use this off of cooldown. So in the lane, you probably don't want to have this, right clicks right there you don't want it to be automatically used because you either want to use it to secure like a range creep or to just harass the enemy a ton and so then you can save it a little bit you know you can get some last hits it doesn't automatically happen the enemy off laner or four position walks up or whatever and then you just use it again um, obviously with each level uh, these spells have a lower cooldown same thing with Sakuchi. same thing with geminate attack so obviously the more levels you get the more you can spam these out so obviously this is just a way that weaver can do way more damage secure uh last hits, and get more farm. And then lastly, we have Time Lapse. So Time Lapse is the one other ability that allows this hero to be extremely uh, survivable, extremely annoying, to dip in and out of fights, abate a lot of spells, and still live. So if we, you know, we see... Uh, let's give Axe a little bit of attack speed. Let's give... So what we're doing... Because what happens is... When you press your ult, you go back in time... To a point when you had probably more health and more mana. So what will happen is if we refresh here. If we have Axe attacking me. Let's say I take a ton of damage very, very quickly. And I'm very low health. Well, what you want to do is you just want to press your ult. And then you can run away. Because you'll go back in time to that position. The other thing, as we see here, is... Um, we, we saw Axe just attacking me, so I regained my health. But the other thing that will happen is if I go over here and I press my alt, I will actually go back in time in space as well. So it's basically just a reset of a few seconds on the hero, and you can take a look at the ability for yourself and see, you know, how, you know, long it is and all of those kinds of things. But basically, you just, like, go back in time. So anything that happened to you, obviously, as long as you're not stunned, you can use it. As long as you have some mana, at least early on, you can use it. And it just basically puts you back in time, regain all of your health, regain your positioning, all of those kinds of things. Now, the one thing that I will say about this is that you need to be careful not to use, like, I'll take free spells off. You'll be careful not to use this and then that because now you don't have Sakuchi. So what you want to do is you don't want to use Sakuchi first and then, like, use it really quick and then do this because now you're running around for five seconds with no Sakuchi. So what you want to be doing, and a, kind of like a key, a tip, is just to, if you're getting damaged a lot, you either want to use this and then make sure it's at least close to off cooldown before you use it again, because now I have one second before I can use it again. Or, 
you basically take a shit ton of damage, you know, and then you just press this instantly, and then you use Kuchi to run away. So that's just a key, a tip. You don't want to use your ult, like, right after using Scoochie, because you'll usually just, like, end up dying. And then, obviously, the only other real key for the hero in terms of abilities is using the swarm correctly, like, sending it out in a direction, you know. If the, uh, if a person, if a hero is walking this way, you kind of want to preemptively, uh, or, you know, predict where they're going and where they're traveling, because this swarm isn't super fast. It's kind of fast, but it's not super fast, and it has, like, a little bit of a travel time and a speed and all those kinds of things in an AoE, so it's sort of like, almost like Tinker's March of the Machines. You want to aim it a little bit. So, that is Weaver. Those are his abilities that are important, and then basically you just build normal items on Weaver, as I always say. Follow one of the guides, like Tortellini or Immortal Faith, and just build these normal items for the patch. And basically you want to get tanky, you sometimes want to buy BKB, survivability items, but also a lot of damage items, so you can get a ton of damage in with your right clicks and with this minus armor for the swarm. So, that's Weaver. Those are his abilities. Now let's jump into a game and see how he's played. Now we're going to jump into a replay here of Mason playing Weaver, and Mason's probably one of the best Weaver players in the world. He just plays it a bunch as one of his best heroes. And what I want to show you in this landing stage is basically just how aggressive he is with this hero and how he uses his Sakuchis. So that first one we see, he uses it to secure last hit, get damage, but then also chase the four position away to kind of zone the four position out, that if the four position came close, he just tries to maximize the damage of his Sakuchi onto both the heroes in the lane, and also use the positioning afforded to him as much as possible. And you see how aggressive this hero can be. Now, you do have to be careful because the hero isn't that tanky. He only has 600 health early on. So it's just one of these things where you really have to be careful with the positioning. But you see that they already have to use a salve. Level 1. It's just one of these things where this hero is very, very strong. You can chase people down. Even level 1, you can be fairly aggressive. Now, I will say... He's using more Sakuchis, like this one probably, and some of these others that he's using in this lane because he does have a Coddle, so he's able to spam out his Sakuchi a little bit more. So he probably wouldn't chase as much. He wouldn't be spamming it like off cooldown nearly as much. He would save it a little bit more for the best times to get damage, but he knows with a Coddle, he can just kind of use it for damage almost every time it's off cooldown. So just keep that in mind. But there is another really good time where he uses it but he knows, because he wants to get damage, but he knows diving under tower is probably not a good idea. And if he attacks while he's, you know, Sakuchi'd, he will not have Sakuchi up, and he'll be very slow, and he could get turned on easily by those two heroes. So, it's all about decision making. It's all about knowing your limits with this hero. So, if you're going to play Weaver, if you're going to play Weaver Carry, you just have to play it and get used to it and spam it so you can know the limits. You can know when you're safe, when you're vulnerable, all of those kinds of things, when to use your cooldowns and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and now we can just see briefly that obviously he's doing the same thing that carries do. Um, unfortunately, the replay, new replay system is bugged, so we don't even see the last hits. We can see he has 11 though. But we can see right there, he wasn't using his Geminate attack to secure last hits because now it's toggleable. So as soon as the Pango walks up, he immediately used the Geminate attack to harass the Pango because you can just basically get another free extra hit. So this is another reason why he's really, really good at trading. And then there is another thing that we see. We see him getting all of the creeps down low under tower to ensure that he doesn't miss a last under tower. He uses a Sakuchi to secure two creeps and then, you know, put the other one in a damage range so that he can get the last under the tower. So this is just like quintessential perfect play from Mason on one of his best heroes. And... Honestly, you should watch this replay, other replays where he's playing this hero to just see how to dominate in the lane with it, how to play in the lane really well, and all of these kinds of things, because um, this hero can really be a good lane-dominating hero. But then right there, as we see, you do have to be a little bit careful that you don't take bad trades, because this hero is pretty squishy, doesn't have a lot of HP early. So, it is just something that... It's a great example of needing to learn the limits of the hero, needing to learn, you know, when you're vulnerable, when you're not, um, when you can be aggressive, all that kind of stuff. And then we see they get a couple kills and they get another kill on the Pango here just because of how aggressive he's being. And like I said, the Coddle is partially responsible for giving it, him extra mana. But we see he is like full mana now. He probably could have done similar kinds of things uh, without a Coddle and just maybe had a Mango or something like that. And he would be... No, maybe half eight, half mana or something like that still. But 
In any case, I think that's a great example of how to be aggressive with this hero early on. He has decent last hits. He's also 1-0 and 1. He's being super aggressive and punishing the enemy anytime they're out of position and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, the last thing I think I'd say about the laning stage is sometimes you want to rush these aggressive items like Wraith Band or even like this um, Javelin for your Maelstrom and don't always get boots. Getting boots and getting treads is good. It, it's not bad. I won't say it's like something really bad. You should probably get it every game on Weaver um, just to start out because you're not going to be good enough to make the right decision of when to get it or not. But it's something to consider that because of his Sakuchi, he doesn't need to rush boots. He doesn't need to rush treads like some other heroes may get treads like first item or something like that. So just keep that in mind. So that is Weaver in the laning stage. Now let's jump ahead and look at him more mid game. We fast forwarded a little bit here to like kind of post laning stage, just as the laning stage is over. And we see he already just got his Maelstrom, which is a really good timing, which is why sometimes you want to rush the Maelstrom and not have the boots, like I said. But I just wanted to show you this fight because this is a perfect fight. He sees there's three people here, but he knows with the lack of stuns that he is going to be safe with his Max Kuchi to get away if he needs to. He also has stick. His ultimate is on cooldown, so he does need to be a little bit careful. And he's even low HP, but he's basically like baiting people to use spells on him. Um, because he just knows the limits of the hero. Obviously, they have the Void Spirit come in with them, but you see he, like, ran in 1v3. You see that they even have the Kunkka coming, and he, like, he just understands the limits of the hero so much, he uses Sakuchi to run away, and then once the Sakuchi is fully used, he uses his time lapse as soon as it's off cooldown to get that HP back, and he just is becoming a menace in the fights, dodging around, doing a decent amount of damage, just being a nuisance, and he doesn't even have full HP. He has, like, 25% HP the entire time, and you see how effective he's being in this fight. He's always kind of playing the outskirts, looking at the best opportunity to go in, sees a low, a low support and the low mid hero, goes in, gets a kill on that, um, on the Kanka there, and he's just constantly playing the outskirts, like, all the time, playing the perfect positioning. And then eventually he says, okay, I'm low health, like, I don't want to fight this anymore. My other heroes are low mana, low health, they're backing up. I'm just getting back to base and regening. But I think that's just, like, a perfect fight. That is, like, the quintessential uh, fight for Weaver. It's just, like, chaos, running around, causing chaos, you know going in 1v3, surviving, all these things, and we just see how he's the perfect player for this because he's, like, just, you know, knows the limits of the hero so much. It's just great to show you that kind of fight, even early on, what Weaver can do with only a few levels and, like, one item, not even boots, all of that kind of stuff. And that's exactly how you want to play fights, even into the late game. It's just causing chaos, surviving on a few HP, baiting people around, all of that kind of stuff, and then going for supports in the back line. So, I think that's just a perfect example of how to fight mid-game, but how to fight even in the later game. So, I fast-forwarded a little bit here, and Weaver did die to a gank, a five-man gank, and then when he respawned, he sees that, you know, the enemy's all bottom. He doesn't really want to participate in that, because bottom's not the greatest place to go. He also doesn't want to be 1v5. That's not really how Weaver takes his fights. He wants to split the map, split the enemy up, be very aggressive, and then maybe take a fight where it's uneven numbers because he doesn't want to get caught out with everything that the enemy has. So, we see he goes top, which is a good idea, but the key that I want to show you is just how aggressive on the map he's being. He obviously has this ward that helps him feel safe, but you can obviously buy a ward yourself as a carry and put it somewhere like this if you're playing Weaver, but he goes and farms the enemy jungle extremely aggressively because he knows the only way that he's really going to die is a um, Kunkka boat combo, he sees Kunkka bottom, or maybe like catching him as Pango, you know, with Pango catching him in like a weird, you know, choke point, but it's very hard to even do that with Weaver. Now he sees Pango, and with one support, this is how you want to play Weaver. You want to catch somebody that's split pushing alone, that's being alone, and you just want to easily kill them. And you see how much damage he does and when he puts those bugs on the Pango. A traditionally decently tanky hero that can usually get away just stands no chance because, you know, his armor is reduced, and then the Sakuchi allows him to catch up to him very, very quickly and do a ton of damage. And it's just one of these things where Weaver wants to farm this way, wants to play aggressive, wants to get pickoffs 1v1, um, will dominate 1v1. We even see... Um, I didn't show you, but earlier, before he died, he was, like, poking and prodding at the enemy carry, at the lifestealer, and winning that 1v1 battle just because of how effective it is to kind of, you know... 
um, kite people with this hero. So that's pretty much how you want to be playing Weaver. Now that they took the top tower, he's probably going to play very, very aggressive, similarly to how he was before, but just pushing this wave in, farming the enemy jungle, not giving them that much space, saying, okay, I'm the Weaver, I'm going to play aggressive, I'm going to play up in your face, and you're going to have to deal with me, or you're going to lose map control, I'm going to farm your whole jungle, I'm going to be very aggressive and kill anybody that's out of position, and that's basically how you want to be playing Weaver. And obviously you see, he's taking a look at the fights, but he doesn't necessarily want to join the fight or force 5v5 engagements. He wants to get pickoffs like this where, you know, the enemy has can't really do anything to help him um, or to help the Pango because they're fighting mid. So this is just how you want to take fights on Weaver. That's how you want to play mid game. You want to get pickoffs. You want to split push. You want to play the map like this. And this is the perfect example. So I would suggest downloading a replay like this. Um, you know, of Mason or something else, some good carry playing Weaver and just seeing how they play the map, how they split push effectively like this, and how they, you know, ch make the enemy chase them around and all those kinds of things, but how he just constantly is dodging 5v5 fights. So that's sort of how to split push, how to farm in the mid game with Weaver. The last thing I'm going to show you here is how to play Weaver in team fights in the mid to late game. And so they smoke up here, and this is mainly because Mason gets his BKB timing, and so he knows he's extremely strong. He does decent damage, but also is very, very survivable. So let's just watch Mason as he plays this fight. He gets into the middle, does insane damage, realizes that he's kind of in a weird spot, so he time wants to time lapse out. That maybe isn't the best time lapse, but he just wants to time lapse to try to get out of the fight a little bit because he feels that he's at a weird position. He doesn't want to get um, rolled on. He doesn't want to get comboed down. And now he's just doing a ton of damage, uh, poking and prodding. You know, running away from the roll, popping BKB when he doesn't because he doesn't want to get chain stunned in the Roche pit, and then just picking the heroes off and playing the outskirts of the fight. Uh, picking heroes off one by one, but I think the key is is obviously they played the hero the fight really well His team played the fight well, but even though that's that uh, time lapse wasn't the best I think it's just a good example of how to think about the hero in terms of team fighting He went in he was really aggressive and he did a lot of damage to the Rubik But then the Rubik was saved and he was kind of right in the middle in an awkward position So he time lapsed mainly to try to get himself out of that position to gain a little bit of health back and then to Sakuchi away and that's kind of what you want to do. If you feel like you're in a weird position, it's okay to use your ult, get away, and then keep playing the outskirts of the fight. Keep doing a ton of damage um, around the edges to the supports and the other people um, that are, you know, kiting everybody around and those kinds of things. Don't let people focus you. And that's mainly what I wanted to show you in that fight. So that is how to play Weaver. I hope this guide helps you. Obviously, he's one of those heroes, like I said, that is very much about positioning. So if you want to play this hero, you're going to have to spam him, really learn his positioning, learn his strengths, learn his weaknesses, all of those kinds of things. So I hope that guide was helpful. As always, guys, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Join the Discord if you haven't already. You can put replay review requests there, or you can even put them in the video if, you know, YouTube doesn't delete the replay ID. I'll be doing replay reviews now every Friday um, on Twitch. I'll do it, you know, at different times. We'll see which one works out the best. And then the VOD will be there, so you'll always be able to watch the replay. If, you know, you can't catch it for yours in time, that's fine. You can just go to my channel and you can watch the replay there. And as always, guys, I also have coaching. Um, so if you want coaching and you really want to improve, um, my coaching has gone really, really well so far. So look to do that. The link is also below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.